love, people. I'm going to show y'all a little something, something. I'll show y'all. This, this the type of transparency I am on this internet, okay? I ain't one of them motherfuckers that be trying to pretend to be something I'm not on the internet. I'm not one of them. I'm going to show y'all some of the gobbler goop <laughs> that I filed in my court case when I was fighting my child support shit, okay? This is my old case back in 2016. Uh, the petition originally was uh, filed uh, in September 2016. Matter of fact, I, most, I probably want to start with, I'm going to start off because I couldn't find all of the petition because these documents are scattered out everywhere. See right here, this this whole thing right here, all kind of old stuff, all kind of bullshit. This is a lot of the goblet goop, and I'm going to show y'all some of the stuff. Look at that. Counterclaim for deprivation of rights. You know, this is some, no, that ain't even the right case. That's a different case. Yeah, that's a different case. Hold up. Is this one of them? No, nope, that's a different case. Here we go. Here we go, right here. Y'all see right here. I'm going to tell you, this is a lot of bullshit. I told y'all, this is the same case number. I told y'all, I filed a lot of bullshit. And y'all see like this stuff be file stamped right here. This was April right here, but this ain't. So this is later on. See, right? This April of 2017. It started in September. So we kept going until like July or something like that. Back and forth. And I filed a lot of bullshit. Okay. This is not what I filed. This is not there. This is what they filed. But this is one of my documents. Look at this here. Affidavit of rebuttal <laughs> on our mediation order and amend and amended tra uh, uh, well, uh, registration of trade names. See that you could tell by the title is some bullshit. <laughs> As you see, filed in March 2017. This some bullshit. Matter of fact, I called it an affidavit. If it's not notarized, it's not an affidavit. See, I declare under penalty of perjury. All this old shit. Look how I even sign my name. I know I filed a lot of bullshit. I said I filed a lot of bullshit. So who can expose me for telling y'all whatever, for, for trying to show you on their channel what I've already show, told y'all in the past? This is the uh, the attorney's oath right here, the attorney or the judge. I think it's the judge's oath. Yeah, that's the judge. That's her oath. I went and got that from probate court. Um, And it's, it's a certified cop. Uh, that may be a certified cop. See, September. It started on the 13th of September of 2016. I responded. This was my this was my response. Matter of fact, remember that's why uh, he showed uh, uh, Jackass showed y'all that it said uh, opposition to this was the actual document. As you see, it's file stamped, and it's some bullshit. If you pause this right now and just read it, you'll see it's some bullshit. <laughs> You know, but I answered it. Bottom line is, I answered it. That's all really matters is the fact that I answered it. And I've been saving these documents, you know, just really just whatever. It's not like I can use them because I wouldn't, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't worry none of myself to say this stuff nowadays. So it was actually two pages. Let's see if I can pull that out of there. Two pages. It wasn't no long answer, but it was, and it was also notarized, as you can see. So... This was my very first answer to a, the child support case. Very first answer. Filed right there. Okay. Matter of fact, I'm going to show y'all. I'm going to show y'all that I found the, uh, a part of the uh, actual original petition. See, Jackass wouldn't show y'all that. He too busy trying to tell y'all that my court case wasn't about child It wasn't about child support. You guys look familiar to y'all? Same court case, September 13th. What does that say? Within foregoing petition for custody, child support, and injunctive relief. Okay? Having been read, consider the order. It is ordered. They kind of, they try to order me to like to stay away from my son's mom and all that old stuff. It all that different crap. You know, you know them, you know them chicks quick there. Quick to use uh, false accusations to get the get the jump start the cases. Every man that's on child support probably y'all can relate. <laughs> but you see right there, and wasn't just talking about cussing. It was talking about child support too. I'm back in the garage. And this was ongoing bullshit. Yes, my stuff was gobbledygook. I told y'all it was gobbledygook. And that was my answer right there to that that uh document. That's why I named it what I named it because that's what she was that what she was filing for. I'll put that back in there later. Look at that. This some bullshit. 
see judicial notice of, uh, of adjudicated facts <laughs> notice of special appearance even though see all this some of it was notarized some of it wasn't you know it was my first rodeo show I told y'all it was my first rodeo show look at it motion of notice <laughs> and motion to be heard I got that from Jonah Bay I used to hear that motion to be heard all the time I got that from him but hey if you pause it you can see it's some bullshit I know I filed bullshit. I said it. I told y'all this back in 2019. Look at that. I even did this. I went this far. <laughs> That's her attorney. Why I put that there? I don't know why I did that. I have no idea. And I told y'all I was going with that L. McHale bullshit. I was on some bullshit. All my stuff was trash. But bottom line was I filed an objection in that court case. And yes, my paperwork was frivolous. And it was some, some trash. But I was trying everything I thought possibly could. Look at that. Petition and and motion of immediate relief of property. <laughs> you could tell that's some amateur by the way I named this shit. Look at that same court case. You see it's the same case number. This is all file stamp stuff you can find in the court case. Notice of denial of temporary order and, and pro se status. I, I was I had a problem there calling me pro se. He kept trying to say that shit. But, but keep in mind like when you learn this stuff and you learn more of it later on you know you start realizing that you know a lot of stuff that was going on I didn't have to do. Response to the defendant, he was just responding to what I was saying about the pro se status or whatever. What's this? Respond, defendant notice of denial or temporary order. That was me. I filed this. It was I was just making up these damn titles. You can read by the you can read the title until it's trash. Look at that. Notice of default and affidavit rebu affidavit rebuttal. <laughs> what affidavit was I rebutting? I don't damn know. Told y'all it was trash. You can't expose me, Terry. You can't expose me. I told everybody I filed bullshit. I know that. Let's see. Motion for default judgment. Application for default judgment. What? Re, uh, response to plaintiff first request for uh, production of uh, documents uh, What to defend it. So that's what they named theirs, and I just said response to, and I copied whatever they said. It's file stamp. All this stuff is filed in my old case. You know, judicial notice. I used to hear about that all the time. What is this? Uh, this one is talking about the mediation. Affidavit of rebuttal of mediation conference. How you going to gonna be affidavit of rebuttal? How you going to rebut? Oh, boy. It was trash. I know that. Affidavit of notice of motion to intervene with a, with an injunction. I got. I had to get this shit from some damn body. Some some idea from some damn body. I don't know who idea who the idea that was. And look at that, all the public officers. I just changed the shit all the way up. I don't know what the fuck I was doing. I was doing some. I know it was some trash. It was all trash. I knew what the fuck I was. I knew. I knew. To me, I thought I was just. I was just fighting. Here we go. Affidavit of of a counterclaim. And an and invoice of, for injuries. Look at that. That shit. <laughs> oh, boy. And everything I was calling, I was talking about affidavit. This stuff wasn't even notarized most of the time. See, affidavit. Ain't no notarization nowhere. Affidavit for request for bonds and oaths. <laughs> How you going to do a request? And it's an affidavit. It's supposed to be an affidavit, but I'm requesting. Bullshit in my court case. <laughs> I know I did. I said that. I told you. I told y'all that shit in 2019. So, so it, you could try something else again, man. Anybody trying to expose Emros to be some bullshit or whatever, you can try again. Cause I already said that shit when I first fought my child support case. It was my very first case. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just following some shit. I was listening to the same gurus on the internet that's on there today. <laughs> Them jokes is on there that that was probably hopefully they know more than they know than they knew then. Um, I was listening to all of them, and they all was teaching some shit, and they all had their own stuff they were teaching. Hopefully, everybody got sharper and more knowledgeable as they continued on, as I did. So I don't do none of that stuff. I laugh at it now. It's trash. I know it was trash. I never said it wasn't. But the thing is, as you get as you continue to learn this stuff and you continue. Um, you know, just kind of growing, just can continue to you know be teachable. You, you know, you get sharper, uh, sharper in how you you know articulate your work, uh, how you write it up. 
You know, uh, you, I really, that's probably how I end up, you know, going through the, the problems I was going through mentally because I wasn't sleeping well at all. I was calm. I was, my mind was everywhere. Listen to this person, that person, this this talk shoe, that talk shoe, hindsight radio, all the little, you know, you know, all these audios where people are just talking about stuff. And most of most of the people didn't have no, you know, they didn't have anything, you know, to substantiate what they were saying. It was mainly that how they was explaining things the way they understood it. And it wasn't always most of the time it wasn't it wasn't necessary stuff. But I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything. I just knew about the straw man. I knew the basics about the straw man. And I knew that I had to respond. I had to file an answer in the case. I knew I had to file an objection and stand on that. I did know that. But, and I was trying to, that's, that's not even all the stuff. That's just a, a fraction of what I filed in the court cases. So, but I had to dig that out. I finally found this here. And I'm like, oh, that's, there it is. That's, that's proof right there that the case wasn't just about child, it wasn't just about custody. You know, um, I'm going to go down to Columbus and see if I can find the, uh, the original petition. And then I'm gonna find uh, the amended petition and probably make that for my next video. Cause all this post, this, this came with other stuff too. It'd be a, a whole stack of stuff staple. And, um, but the thing is it, um, she, you know, when she was asking for uh, sole legal custody, sole physical custody, child support, injunctive relief, did, did Maureen Godfrey her punk ass? She did she she just granted it with any with no proof at all. She was a straight feminist. I can it was obvious, and even her co-workers said she was a very unfair judge, very unfair and and mean as hell, and she really was. And so I hated that woman, but um she would just but then when she couldn't bully me into submission, she eventually recused herself. So and that's in the court case. You know, she recused herself and the case went sitting still, was sitting still from that point. But I had already gone through it all. But then, um, let's see, this started in September and then in January of 2017, just months later, that's when she went and amended the petition and asked the judge to add to what she already had asked for to change my son's last name from Roseman to Smith. That was she. That's what she went and amended it from this to add on a new request. So she was going for the juggler. So she really had every intentions on not having my son in my life, me not raising him, me having no connection with him, not even having my last name. She was really trying to. She really tried to disconnect him from me. And so that's why I started my YouTube channel in 2019. It was really just so I could tell my story, um, and just in case my son gets old enough and he wants to, he start looking for his dad. Cause I'm on the birth certificate. He gonna know how to find me. That's why I make sure I put my whole name on social media platforms. So if he's ever on the internet, he can find me. And um, that's if he gets old enough to a point where he can actually get on there and he's, you know, he come looking, you know, before I actually get him. Um, so I was just kind of thinking ahead. And that's why I made that video. I mean, that's how I started the channel in the first place. And I, in in one of my videos, I was originally just kind of talking about in the video. I think some kind of way, like I'm talking like now, I made a statement about me beating the child support. And then it took on a life of its own because people people who heard the video started asking me, "How did you beat child support? What did you do?" So I kind of went on from telling my story. I, I continued telling my story, but I was still explaining what I did with the child support case. But me knowing that I admitted I was a beginner and I never fought child support before. As my son is my only child. He's still this day, he's still my only child. And so I was just, you know, so here that was years later, that was like 2019. My son was born in 2016. So he was three years old by that time. And I'm like, I was just really just kind of ready to just put some videos out there just in case. Um, you know, what if I, at some point, because at one point I didn't think I was going to live to see 2018. Um, so, I because I was going through, I was like, mental issues when it came to the situation. It, was, it had me emotionally fucked up, really. And so, I was just kind of thinking ahead. 
just thought I'd make some videos, put some out there in case something happened to me, you know, be the truth to be out there and the videos would be there. And the the whole story would be out there. So that's how I started my channel in 2019. And so people started asking, and that's how I started talking about what I did. And um, I was, you know, believing wholeheartedly that um, me, the trade name registration is what did it. Speaking of that, speaking of that, I'm going to show y'all something. I did the trade name registration and I was believing wholeheartedly it's all about the name. But it all ties in now that I know more than what I knew now, what I knew then. I want to see if I can dig it up. Um, my trade name registration. Oh, let me pull it up. I can pull it up here. <clears throat> this right here, this is this is my trade name registration right here. I think I showed this to y'all. I know I showed this to y'all in many videos in the past. Notice how I, if you want to pause it and kind of read it if you want to, that's up to you. Pause it for a second. Screenshot it or whatever. But I don't live there now, so in that location no more. So, um, But when I did this, I did this. See, keep in mind, remember I told y'all I did a, did one in the past. And keep, it, just keep in mind, this was done in March of 2017. My court case started in September 2016. And I originally did this. Um, shoot. I originally did this. I, I got to find I don't have to find it. Fuck it. It's ugly. It was trash anyway. The original one I did, I had L. McHale on there instead of my name, my actual proper style name. And I put this on there. I did this and notice I was claiming I was here. I was me claiming in my proper style name, claiming to be. The grantor beneficiary of the of this of this particular name right here. And and it's notarized. It's notarized. Now, according to the state laws, it doesn't tell me I have to notarize it, but I did. I notarized it. Okay? And now, something I learned. Now, keep in mind, this is I want to try to tie this in real quick. I did this after I put it in the newspaper. See if I can find the newspaper. What well, they typed it, they, they typed it up first. Uh, they typed this up. All they did was mimic what I said. And they added that code in there. I don't know. I didn't put, I didn't put a code in mind. But... Hold on. I'm trying to show y'all the actual newspaper clipping. Because you have to put it in the newspaper first. Okay? But I'm going to show y'all something. I told you. Most of y'all are familiar with this already. But I did that for my son. I did one for my, my name and my son, so. But I'm gonna show y'all now uh, an example. Uh, come on now, here we go. Okay. This is the newspaper, um, you know, this is what I did for my son, it's an example. But I did one for me and my son. Now, let me see. I don't know if you could pause and read that if you want to. I would word it totally different now, but this is how I worded it back then, okay? And um, the addresses are old anyway, so stalk all you want. That's actually a P.O. box anyway, so I don't have that P.O. box no more. But see right here, I did this. Put that in the newspaper. Those are the dates of publication. See, as you see, I did that way before my son was even born. Let me see. Hold up. Quit doing all that damn. I'm trying to see if I can get it to stop being. Here we go. Published July 31st. In August 7th. Uh, what year is that? What year is this? It's 2023 though. No. No, that expires 2023. When was this done? I'm trying to see what's the date on it. Yeah. 2020. Okay. Published on 2020. Okay. So it went in their newspaper for two publications. You know, okay? Two publications. That was when it was published. This was in the newspaper twice on those two days. And that, that suffice for two weeks. Here in Georgia, one day uh, is sufficient for, for, for one week. One day of the week, say you got today, this Monday, and then next Monday. Then that's two weeks. Then you get then you get the affidavit, and that's what this is. It's notarized. See, this, uh, that's why I said affidavit of publication. 
and it, you know they notarize it around on this side, and this is a copy of what was for, what was on there. You take that and you put that with your registration statement. Okay. Now this is what I wasn't realizing I was doing until like in hindsight. Okay. Let me show you. Go back to. I thought it's important. Um, yep. Here we go. This is really. I didn't realize I probably was really like claiming my estate. You know, I didn't realize that's really what I was doing other than it wasn't just a trade name registration because I was also claiming to be the grantor. Come on. There we go. Uh, grantor. Grantor beneficiary. If you give someone power of attorney to administer your estate, what does that make you? It makes them the trust. That will make that will make them uh, the attorney in fact. And you will be the one granting them, granting them that type of power that makes you the grantor. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to here, the Georgia codes real quick. OCGA, uh, OCGA. Here we go. <clears throat> Remember, I told y'all about the Sesta KV Act. Why got this damn thing so big? Like I'm damn blind. Right here. Upon petition of, of a missing individual, the probate court shall make shall revoke any letters of administration or letters testamentary at any time on due, due and satisfactory uh, proof that the missing individual is in fact alive. Okay. Uh, after such after such revocation, all powers of the personal representatives shall cease, but all receipts or disbursements of, of, of assets or or other or other acts previously done by the personal representative shall remain valid, and the personal representative shall settle and account for the administration uh, to the time of such revocation, and shall transfer all assets remaining to the missing individual or such individual's duly authorized agent or attorney. Okay. Okay, I came there. When you keep in mind, only who can come. Only a living man can actually swear something under penalty of perjury. They come in for a notary. They present a properly identify themselves, um, you know, the, as being the one who the rightful owner of that estate, you know, and not saying that this is the thing that actually beat child support because I, you really don't need that to beat child support. I think it helps a lot, though, because you actually um, keep in mind. According to the Sesta KV Act, when the, when some when the one the rightful owner of the estate come forward and make make claim to what belongs to them, then they then the administration has to cease, as you just read in the Georgia law. If you read in your own state, you'll find the same thing. You know, they, it's worded differently in different states, but they're all saying the same thing. And it's proof when you got it recorded in the county recorder's office, you can get certified copy of that filed in your court case. There's proof that you're not missing anymore. You're not, you're, you're taking control. You're actually claiming control over your own estate. Okay. And now that's, that can shut that down. Now I would wonder, I would go as far as saying, like, keep in mind, I've been talking to y'all about the power of attorney for the last damn near most of the year now, since maybe like what, April, May, something like that about the power of attorney, you, you know, power of attorney, Revoke, you can revoke somebody's power of attorney use your stop them from administering your estate. That takes personal jurisdiction from them altogether. Um, and if you don't do that, if you don't really use a power of attorney, you still keep in mind if someone has power of attorney over your estate, you can rev you can actually they still have to do they still can't do things except by your, your consent. I have like I, I used the example before showing y'all that um like, like my father, I have father, I have power of attorney over his estate, and he's um, oh that damn glare, it's pissing me off. Um, I have power of attorney over his estate, and so I um, you know, I can do things on his behalf, and so um, there have been a few times where, like, say he's a veteran, and so a VA sometime every now and then they may challenge a power of attorney, and they'll ask, you know, is Mr. Roseman there, I say yes, he's here. I said, no, I had to go there to him, and I, you know, and they'll be like, they ask him, do he authorize him to use? Because sometimes they'll challenge a power attorney, but um, because some people just know a 
a notary personally and they'll get them to notarize any damn thing. So sometimes they don't trust him. But um and then he with his vocals, he say he tells he you know he states his name and his and his social and birthday and then he, he they ask him does he authorize me to actually to ask her questions on his behalf, to take care of his medical questions, whatever. And he said yes. He said that's okay. Thanks a lot, Mr. Roman. Thank you for your service. And then from that point on they talking to me. And they open the door and I'm able to talk to them. And so, but generally I don't have to go through that. Power of attorney uh, gives me the power to be able to do things on his behalf. I've opened up bank accounts on his behalf. I've, you know, closed bank accounts on his behalf. You know, I've sold property for him on his behalf. You know, I've done things for him on his behalf. Um, I've ordered his medical records before, you know, birth, you know, different types of stuff like that he needs done. And so that's what a power of attorney allows you to do on their, on their, on their behalf. But it doesn't give you authority to just do what you want to do because they could, they want, they're going to do what they want to do. They wouldn't, they wouldn't have had you served. They wouldn't have served you at all. They would have just did this shit and without serving you at all. And then he'll send you something in the mail and you know, this is what we did. But they need your consent. That's why they serve you because you are the owner of that estate. And you have to, it's, it's always good to, to file your, see, that's why it's important to file your answer into a court case. Because your answer is, 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 it stops them from just making a decision on your behalf. They have to go by what you said, the rightful owner of that estate. If you don't respond, then you're operating somebody as uh, incapacitated or missing, as they call it here in Georgia. You know, um, you know, and well, even in, even in uh, when you're talking about powers of attorney here in in these state statutes, they talk about incapacity too. So even when you're not a baby no more, you're a grown man or a grown woman, you're operating as somebody who's incapacitated, somebody you have not, you have an inability to do things on your behalf. And so you have these people who who was uh, who who's had power of attorney to administer your estate since you were born. They're doing things. They, they still have that power because you never revoked it, and you never and you just will not. You refuse to respond, or you don't want to get served, so you're running from getting served. And they're trying to do business with that estate. As long as you stay missing, you don't want to respond. You don't want to put no answer in there. You go in there, let them scare you into filing. You know, just signing things because you're scared that if you don't consent, then they're gonna lock you up. And that's not how it works. You know, you have the right to stop people from administering your estate and you can specifically serve a judge. You could serve an attorney. You can serve anybody that's trying to administer your estate without your consent. And that, that consent power of attorney, it has to specifically say that you, all previous powers of attorney are hereby revoked and name that joker in your new power of attorney so that they are put on notice that their power is revoked and they can't revoke. They can't do, they can't go further after that. You have proof that they can't touch your estate. You know, you can do that. That's just one way of doing it. Another way of just filing the answer to the case and shut it down like that. I didn't mean to go on a tangent about this because <laughs> child support is not that hard to stop. It's not hard to stop, you know. And, you know, if you already own child support, you did these. if you check out some of my previous videos and see, look at a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about and study it out and get a clear understanding, you can put a lot of this, you can put some combination of things to them to get together and call these jokers out on the fraud that they're doing. Go back and look at that, look at what I'm talking about. These things are not really all that hard. You got people that are trying to, they're trying to discredit what I'm talking about because they out there selling shit and they trying to they want y'all to keep on spending your money over there with them motherfuckers and, and, and breaking yourself because you know they don't want they want to credit discredit so you won't come over here and, and take a look at some of the information that I'm showing y'all over here. Yeah, but power of attorney is, is that damn simple. You, they don't have personal jurisdiction once you do that. Without personal jurisdiction, you got no case. <laughs> How can anybody, can, you know, personal jurisdiction, that means they get to administer your estate. But if I sh shut it down by serving them power of attorney, they can't do nothing. <laughs> you know, so, you know, that's why he's all over here trolling my trolling my stuff all of a sudden. You know, Terry Parks. That's why he's trolling me like that. You know, all in my comments. I like the fact that he's doing that because they let me know push, he push and play. You're giving me some watch time. I appreciate that, homie. Good looking out, my nigga. <laughs> you know, so he all in my comments reading, talking about he got a, a court order that was filed on December the 11th. That's six pages long. Ain't no damn child support court order. 
six pages long. <laughs> I ain't never seen no child support case, no child support court order that's six pages long. If a judge gonna tell you they got a court case, a court uh, uh, order against your ass, it damn sure ain't gonna be no six page, no six page long document. But anyway, y'all check out this information, apply it, understand it. You know, challenge what people are teaching you. Challenge what people are saying. And if you got somebody that's spending so much time trying to troll somebody else, you might need to side out of that motherfucker because what is you, what is the point? What do you get out of that? You know what I'm saying? Just like, really, what, what do you really get? See y'all in the next video. Emma signing out.